I recently wrote a journal entry that was very impactful for me. And it came from the idea that Neville said that me and you descended here into this limited being within ourselves. We descended within ourselves to a level where things seem to disappear. They seem to go out of our focus. But he states that, but if we enter ourselves into the world that's eternal within ourselves, we can once more um, assume it to be so and it can become so. It objectifies itself in our world. So things that seem to disappear don't disappear. You and I, we may fall into a position where we feel like we have lost our health or I have lost my faith or I have lost my love. I have lost my uh, standing in my community. I've lost my respect. I have lost my wealth. I have lost this, that, and the other. But things that once were or things that are in the mind always will be. So I didn't necessarily lose anything. But what I did lose in some sense, or the reason why I experienced loss, is because of my belief in loss. The idea that I did lose something, the, I, the belief in loss itself is the reason why I experienced loss in my world. But I can enter myself and find it again. So I wrote this uh, journal entry that really was quite mystical in its writing, but I think it's very practical as well. And I want to share it and explain more about it. And I write, If God created all things, then God is the creator of my sadness, my loneliness, my hatred, my rage, my sexuality, my family, my love, my joy, and my peace. And God's name is I Am. So I ask, who is my sadness? I am. Who is my anger? I am. Who is my loneliness? I am. So all things were created from him, but his name is my name. But I have attached myself so much to my outer identity named Edward that I do not remember or recognize my name. My name is I am. I am the person aware. But I attach myself to these labels. But I speak now from the inner man's perspective. I look and see my parents not as a symbol of me, the inner man, but take them as causation. But they are a symbol of causation. The two come together and become one. That is causation. But I, the inner man, am one. I am spirit. Time is nothing to me. Everything has no life unless I spring it up within me. I can curse the root of the thought, for it withers when I take myself out of it. For I am the vine. I am the awareness that brings light to all things within myself. But no, I am not just a man. But I will die as one. I become one with man, so man can become spirit. All pleasures and pains of man are temporal, but I am forever. And this is how I create. I, the inner man, believe in myself. I call what is not so by the mortal eye, as though it is so. I, the one within, call it so. For without my command it cannot become so, for I am the life, the vine. I fulfill myself so I can become living water that I may never thirst again. I enter myself and call it seen, and it becomes seen. But let me not create a god. I am God. Are you sure you made no idols? Are you desperate for God? Then you are in Egypt, Athens. Feel after him and you'll find him. There is no other God but he within. Examine yourself and see if you are seeking. For all that you could possibly seek is within you. Examine where you are desiring and fulfill. For desire in consciousness is the belief in loss. For nothing can be lost for spirit is eternal. Enter yourself and believe you have. There is no other you can turn to. The kings of your time will rule over you. The gods will starve you. The holy men will make you feel sinful. This is the inner man speaking. Come to me. I am good. I will uplift you. I will hold you and comfort you. I will protect you and feed you. I will never leave you. I am love. I am good. I will freely give to you. So come to me. You will not starve but be full. I am all giving. I am all forgiving. I am all merciful. I am love. I am the good shepherd. I am in all and I will rescue all. None are forgotten, for we are one. 
To lose one is to lose myself, for spirit is undivided. Understand spiritual things first, and all these pleasures of man will be given. For you were born in this body of death. This is a bed, a tomb. But the entire external is one body. The body you are in is a representation of this entire reality. But you will look for causation, and you will look at your parents and think you found causation. And that is true for the outer man, but not you, the man of the spirit. You, the inner man, the invisible awareness, are causation. So let go of these labels made of man, and see you are a spirit, and God is spirit. Labels of man cause division, but spirit is unity. So do not bow to the order given by man, by Caesar. For man is a representation, not causation. Caesar says no, but God says yes always. All things being imagination, it will find a way, for God is the way. The way to what? All things. So do not mimic or worship man, nor his heroes, for man can only create gods with plaster and wood. For the idols of man will eventually betray. God will introduce himself as light, awareness within man, then power, then love. And in my terms, awareness, causation, and love, and the greatest of these are love. Now, I wrote this because I was inspired by Neville. And something he he asked was, do I believe my imagination is Lord? Do I believe that's my God, my creator, imagination? Because the way we treat imagination, the way we think of it, is how we treat it. So if I think, have you ever heard someone say, well, that's just his imagination? Like, almost like it's silly. It's just silly. It's just a child's imagination. It means nothing. So that's what we treat it as. But if I viewed it as my Lord, my God, or my Creator, I would treat it as such. I wouldn't be so willing to dismiss it. But if I keep viewing it as something silly then I won't really experience much from it. I won't really use it. But if I see it as it is my creator, then I can't turn to another creator. I can't go to some king and ask him to give me what I want. I can't ask a holy man. I can't go to some priest to forgive me. I'll come back tomorrow and need to be forgiven. So, knowing that Imagination is the only thing you're looking for that's been within you all along. The Creator, we're all looking for God. Everybody is. But God is not, you know, doesn't dwell in a temple made by human hands. He's not made of wood and plaster. He's, he is us. And this is so relieving because the Creator is good. Imagination is good. And the way imagination sees you is who you're going to be in the world. So when you enter yourself and you actually see yourself the way you want to see yourself in inside yourself, that's how imagination sees you. Because it tells us God doesn't judge after appearances like you and I do. He judges after the, the mind of man. So how I am inside myself is how he sees me. And that's who I'm going to be in the world. Because he doesn't judge after my appearance. He doesn't care how I look. He wonders what I'm whispering inside myself. He listens to that. He sees how I see myself. He doesn't push me. He allows me to make all the mistakes. He allows me to become whatever I want to be. He allows me to take any kind of position I want in the world, inside imagination. But you and I can enter ourselves whenever we would like. We need to learn to leave the facts alone. Leave Caesar alone. Leave man alone. Leave the facts alone. Leave the denials alone. Leave it all there. If you can leave it all there and assume you are so, whatever it is you want to be, and you hold on to that and persist in that, regardless of the facts, it becomes so. Now, when you learn to, the reason why it's so important to leave it alone is because that's where power comes from. See, if you and I had to continuously manipulate the world to get our way and lie to these people and step on those people and then we're not really acting in power, are we? We'll always feel like we have some enemy, something we have to fight against to get to our desired goal. But that's not what Neville teaches. Neville says if you want to be convinced of this truth, you're going to have to assume and not lift a finger to make it so. All you're going to have to do is continuously assume you are that thing. 
And he says, the moment you can conceive of it, you are it. And you are an imagination. The moment I can conceive of myself being something other than what I am, inside myself, I am that inside myself. Do I have faith in that? That that's me? It has to be me. Who else is it going to be? So I deny my reason. I let go of the facts. I don't try to control the facts. I leave them the way they are. It's so free when you leave it all the way it is. And I don't have to go to some holy man. I don't have to pray to some king or worship it. The gods that we create in this world, they starve us. Pray to the God here. Pray to the God made by man. And next thing you know, you will just be starving. It won't answer you. But this God does. My own I amness answers me. So what I assume in the mind, what I am, I have to be that. Because he doesn't judge after appearances. He judges after my own self, my own mind within me. So the moment I see myself the way I want to be, he accepts me. You can walk around your life feeling heard, feeling seen, because you are heard and seen by the only being that matters, if imagination's your Lord. But if you think it's just some silly little thing, it's just your imagination, well then that is what it's going to be to you. you know, we decide what it is to us. What I've seen is that imagination allows us the freedom to change how we see ourselves, regardless of the facts. Now that's the important part. Most of us use these teachings to change the facts and not ourselves. But when you can discover, when you discover that it is through changing the self that the facts change, then you actually do have supremacy over the facts. So you don't need to bother with them. You'll know that the moment when things are not the way I want them to be in my world, I don't freak out. I don't panic. I leave the facts, the dead facts alone. I let them, I let Caesar have them and I change myself. Am I in bondage? Well, then I'll assume that I'm free inside. And that's consciousness sees me the way I see myself. So if I see myself as free, it sees me as free and then I become free in the world. But I have to persist in it. You know, there's a story that Neville always gives of a man who, uh, the parable where the man, it was nighttime and he kept knocking on him for, for some bread in the middle of the night. And the man in the house so basically opens up and tells him to go away because it's late. But the man just keeps knocking and he tells him again to go away. But he just keeps knocking on the door. Eventually, the man comes down and gives him his bread. He goes, what do you want? And he goes, well, I want a piece of bread. I'm hungry. So then he goes, okay, fine. If I give you the bread, you'll go away. Now, this parable is actually really good because it speaks on persistence. That if we keep persisting in knowing that I am it and leave the facts alone, let him tell me no, let him tell me, let the guy in the house tell me all these things. But he eventually, he has to come down and grant me the bread. He has to. That's basically what the story is telling us, that persistence ends with granting. So, But I don't persist in trying to become. I persist in being it in the mind. It's a big difference. And when you actually feel that you're it, not with an emotion, but an acceptance that you're it, and you persist in that acceptance, people around you, things will change. People's ideas will change around you. People will enter your life. People will leave it. But it will get you to the desired outcome that you want. So leave the facts alone. You can't go to another. Once you've, once you've accepted that imagination's God, your God, your creator, that your own I amness is the creator, then you can't go to another. You can't find yourself in a going to some building and praying, expecting an answer, because you know that the one who answers is the one within ourselves. So there's nothing more freeing that I can think of as of now, that knowing I can feel safe inside myself, I can, and then I become safe. I can feel, I can feel that I have the things I thought I lost. You know, for a long time in my life, I thought I lost my faith. I thought I lost my courage inside myself. I became so afraid. I thought I lost my safety. I thought I lost all these things, my respect. I lost it all growing up. I lost everything growing up. I really did. 
And I lived in this, I was an, I was an emotional beggar in my world. I would, you ever see someone begging for change? Well, that was me with emotions. I would use people, I'd, I'd beg for people to give me emotions, validate me, validate me. I would seek Caesar for his validation. I, I wanted someone to believe in me first. I would be a beggar of belief, asking people to give me faith. Believe in me first so I can believe in myself. But there is no other I can turn to. I can't go to another person. So I become more attentive to the words I speak within myself. Because the words I speak within myself have the power to free me. Those little whispers throughout the day matter. And if I can change them in a way where they are uplifting, I'll find that they do free me. So I start to validate myself. I start to feel I am the things I want to be. I don't allow Caesar to dictate me. I don't allow the person next to me to tell me no. I leave the facts alone. Regardless of what they are, and I know that can be challenging, but I don't change those. I change myself. The world tells me that I'm worthless, that I lost my status, or I don't feel like an equal to people. I feel beneath them. I leave it all alone. People treat me that way. I leave it alone. And I go within myself and realize that I believed in the loss of my status. I believed in the loss of my equality. I believed in the loss of whatever it is. And I believe I have it. That's what it is. You and I have descended and we feel like we lost things. But we can't lose anything that's within ourselves. So practice that every day. Going within yourself. Find what you think you lost. Find it. It's there. You know, the knock and the door will be open. Seek and you shall find. Seek what is it that you lost inside yourself. You'll find it. And the way, um, and when you find it and you grant it, consciousness will do the same. It's good. It tells you that the mind doesn't, or the consciousness doesn't, um, you know, sometimes when you ask your parent for something, they give you something else, but not the mind. The mind will give you exactly you ask for a, a fish, it doesn't give you a snake. So I grant myself what it is I want, knowing that I'm not going to get something different. So I hope that this was more, I know that it can be quite different when it comes to Neville's spiritual talks, but I find them very freeing. I find it very um, opening, eye-opening at least, that it being said in a different way, that the reason why I'm experiencing the things I dislike is because I believe I lost. I lost the things I wanted. I lost the things I love. And so take an ideal. Take something you would love to be and fall in love with it. You can't fail. Love cannot fail. So you fall in love with the things you want to be, just like you fell in love with being here. You and I fell in love with being this. In some sense, we are the love of our lives. So, I hope that helps, that you can't turn to another. Go within. You will be. It will fail you if you go externally to Caesar. Turn to God. Understand the spiritual things, that He's good, all-giving, all-merciful, all-forgiving, that nothing cannot be for... The moment you believe that... You can't be forgiven. You're saying God can't, God is not that merciful to forgive me. Or you feel like you can't be given something and you don't feel worthy. But like, well, that imagination doesn't see me that worthy. It's like imagination became you. You and I are in complete, completely worthy because we are one with God. We, we don't have life without Him. So you and I are completely qualified. We're completely qualified to imagine what it is we want. We're completely qualified to deny the facts and assume you and I have complete um, ownership of the things within ourselves. So we don't have to feel like a beggar anymore. We can be a giver. We can be abundant in the things we want to be within ourselves. So hope that helps. <laughs>